Hey everyone, uh, I'm Akanksha Deshpande, working as a senior software developer here at Geekcans. Uh, so today I'll be talking about how to use Expo CI CD to build a very smooth and efficient mobile deployment pipeline. We'll just see how with one push, the whole process of building, signing and submitting of your app takes place. Let's dive in. Uh, before we jump into the CI CD process, so first let's try to understand why to even automate the mobile deployment because we still can manually build, manually sign, manually submit the applications, right? Then why to automate? So there are many reasons, few of them uh, which I have mentioned. So uh, manual builds are time very time consuming. So we have all seen how Xcode takes up a lot of time in just validating the application, right? So we have all been there. And sometimes uh, even developers have local, uh, different local setup. So the dependencies might vary, the SDK vers versions might be, might vary. So uh, yeah, I mean, things like this can happen. And the credentials, coming to the credentials, I think this is one of the major mismatch which happened to me itself. I've experienced it firsthand. So I was working on a release application um, on an Android, basically. So, um, I was in, I was supposed to release the application in release mode, but I was using debug key store. So yeah, th prof provisioning profiles and uh, uh, I mean, certificates do get mismatched. So eventually, I think uh, for a longer run, uh, we cannot always guarantee that we are using the right credentials. So yeah, things like this might happen. Um, so overall, I think um, the whole feedback loop gets slowed down. So if you're uh, releasing the application very late, so the feedback also becomes very late and thus hampering the project's life cycle. So yeah. Uh, let's dive into how to set up the Xcode and I mean, what's the agenda next? Now that we know the manual builds are not effective for the longer run, uh, let's move on to how to actually use Expo as a CI CD tool, uh, which will do actually everything for us right from building to signing and submitting our app automatically with just one code push. So uh, today agenda is going to be uh, exploring about the architecture of the build, um, I mean, the in general build flow, um, the Expo setup, linking our GitHub repo to the Expo and managing signing credentials basically for both Android and iOS, uh, Play Store and App Store setup. So basically we'll uh, be uh, letting Expo submit the apps on behalf of us and at the end, common CICID errors. This is the architecture of the whole build process. As you can see, there is a source repository where our code resides. And then uh, the GitHub Actions, this is an optional um, step. So uh, this is not covered actually. You'll get to know why it is not covered. And then the build happens, uh, obviously, uh, along with the build, the signing also happens for iOS and Android. Web is not covered here. And then um, the last step is submitting the apps to the App Store and Play Store respectively. Um, so OT updates as a special feature of Expo uh, basically over the air update allows to deliver the JavaScript or uh, TypeScript code to the users without actually publishing a new build to the stores. So, um, I mean, uh, probably the use cases might be small UI tweaks or content changes, um, uh, text or a layout, or any minor asset changes like images, fonts, um, etc. Let's start the Expo setup by first creating the Expo project. We can uh, create the Expo project by using this command uh, or else if you already have the Expo project set up, then make sure the latest code is pushed into the GitHub repository. Um, the next step is to install the EAS CLI globally. Uh, basically EAS is uh, Expo Application Services. It is a tool developed by the Expo um, in order to manage all its services like Expo Build, Expo Configure, Expo Submit, um, etc. So basically install it globally. Uh, the next step is to actually log on to uh, expo.dev and create an account there. Uh, create an account and using that credentials also log in with the same credentials on your command line also. You can use EAS login um, as shown. Um, and uh, if you want to use GitHub Actions, um, you can uh, also create a token in the Expo dashboard and add that token as a secret in your GitHub repository. I think uh, uh, the go to the GitHub repo and inside the settings and secret and variables, uh, add, it has, add that token as a secret. Uh, basically, it is letting um, Expo, uh, GitHub manage all the um, EAS commands. 
uh, at the end uh, you have to create a es.json file uh, basically this uh, file is a blueprint of the whole build process uh, so make sure that this exists on the root level of your project the next step is to link GitHub to Expo. Uh, it can be done in two ways, basically, uh, through the command line or through the Expo dashboard itself. Uh, through the command line, once uh, you're logged in into the command line, uh, give the command has uh, ES um, in it. Basically, this will uh, ask you if you if you have to register your project to the Expo. So go ahead and give the name and slug of the project. And uh, yeah, you're good to go. And the next step is, uh, via the expo dashboard uh, this is pretty much uh, my favorite i guess because it has the visual uh, uh, representation and it clearly shows how and uh, what all settings can be uh, linked to a github project uh, so basically um, you first have to uh, go to the top right corner uh, of the dashboard wherein you can create uh, the project uh, it will a modal will appear wherein you can give the name and slug as usual uh, once the project is created you can you'll have to go inside the github uh, section and wherein uh, you can actually connect the github repo uh, once the repo is connected uh, you can select the uh, repo name uh, once the github is connected the, you can select the repo name as well so uh, yeah like shown so the github repo is given and if the code resides in any of the subfolder you can give the folder path name also uh, you can also add a new uh, build trigger here because uh, i mean if a if a code is pushed to a, a particular branch or a pull request is generated against a branch so you can um, trigger uh, new builds here uh, you can also mention the platform which is either android or ios or both of them and build profiles can also be mentioned which is production qa or any custom like development um yeah so, so this is how uh, we link the project um to the expo the next step is the credential management to start with let's start with android um, in expo uh, credential management has become very easy uh, because it is just done by one command which is uh, es configure uh, basically this command will generate the key for us and store the key in the expo server uh, i mean when it has and when the build is uh, triggered the same key is used by the expo server uh, one way is by doing this uh, one more way is the traditional manually generating the key if you want a full control over the key uh, so uh, this is a java command a java key tool command this, this is quite a big command to generate a key um, uh, let me break that down uh, basically gen key uh, is telling the um, key tool to generate the key uh, my release key is the uh, folder name um, and the key is generated by using rsa uh, algorithm uh, with uh, 2048 uh, the size of the key and um, the validity of the key and the alias of the key uh, once this command is entered uh, it will uh, you will be prompted uh, for a few details like name organization name uh, key store password and key password so once you have given that the key is generated and downloaded um yeah then uh, the last step is to upload the same key to the dashboard um either you can upload it to the dashboard um like the, in the gui which uh, is shown uh, or you can uh, upload it via the command line by using as credentials let's move on to the ios signing now um unlike Android signing, iOS signing is a bit more layered. Uh, for the first timers, it might seem very complex uh, because of its layered uh, approach. Uh, but uh, once you understand every uh, what every part does, uh, I think it's quite logical. Um, so basically, the iOS signing uh, altogether consists of only two files, which is the distribution file and the provisioning profile. Uh, the distribution file, which is called a signing uh, certificate otherwise. Uh, so it's basically um, letting the Apple know that you are a verified developer who is trying to build and publish the application. Uh, the provisioning profile uh, is um, a mixture of the app ID, the, uh, the certificate which you just generated, uh, the distribution certificate and the list of devices wherein the app can actually run so uh, let's explore how expo handles the ios uh, management credential management so uh, as all you know the uh, expo has just one command um, which is much easier to manage the credentials which is build configure uh, so obviously we need to authorize the 
um, Apple developer portal via Apple login on the command line. Uh, if uh, it fi finds any previous uh, signing certificates, uh, it will reuse it. Otherwise, it will create one. And the same for provisioning profile also. Basically, Expo manages everything um, by just one command. Uh, otherwise, if you want full control over um, or you want to manually generate the certificates, um, here uh, how we do that. So first one is the distribution certificate. It has few uh, two to three steps for that. Uh, basically, uh, this is uh, created by going to the Apple developer portal, uh, go to the um, certificates and create a certificate uh, of type and distribution. And uh, once, uh, I mean, while it is creating, it will ask for a CSR, basically a, a certificate signing request. So this um, can be generated in your Mac itself uh, from the Keychain Access. You can just go to the Keychain Access and under uh, Certificate Assistant, you can request for a certificate. Uh, so it will give you one and you can just upload it. Um, once the .dot .cer file is generated, so it will be in the P8 format. Uh, but what Expo expects is P12 format. So you just need to um, double click on the downloaded certificate so that it installs in the Keychain Access. Um, so inside the Keychain Access, uh, obviously under the Certificates tab, you can just uh, uh, locate that certificate. Uh, right, -click, right click on that, and you'll find an option uh, has Export has P12. So uh, then you'll have to give a set a password for that. Uh, please remember that password because it is going to be used as that uh, the whole uh, certificate's password. So yeah, I think the distribution certificate is certificate is created. Uh, now coming to the provisioning profile, it's uh, much easier than the distribution distribution certificate. Just again go to Apple Developer Portal and un under the profiles, create a profile of type App Store because. Um, we are not uh, listing any devices that the app should be running on. The app should be running uh, and available uh, completely throughoutly uh, in the App Store, right? So that's why um, of type App Store. I can select the app ID and uh, select the distribution certificate which you just previously generated. And yeah, we can just download the mobile provisioning file. So these two files can be um, either manually uploaded um, on the export dashboard uh, like uh, Android or it can be um, on the, I mean, uploaded via command line itself uh, using EAS credentials. The next step and the final step of the CICD pipeline is the app submission. Uh, let's start with the Android um, Play Store setup. So um, in order to do that, uh, let's go to the Google Cloud Console first. And under I am admin and um, under service accounts, let's create a service account first. Uh, give it a name and a grant service account user uh, has a role. Uh, next step is to generate a key under it. So uh, go to that generated service account and go to the keys tab and it's, uh, generate a key of type JSON. Uh, it will ask you the format of what uh, the key type should be. So select JSON and uh, immediately download the file. Uh, please make sure to download it uh, securely because it will not be available for download for later. Um, once the key is downloaded, then you can upload the key to the Expo dashboard. Uh, once the key is uploaded, the last uh, final step is to go to the Play Console and add the email of that service account. So once the service account is created, a Gmail will be created under it. So add that user as a, um, I mean, add add that service account as a user in the Play Console. Uh, Play Console. Um, I, th I think you can give it uh, give the role has uh, managed releases wherein this particular account will be held responsible uh, to manage releases on behalf of us. So this is how um, you uh, link Expo and Play Console uh, so that Expo can uh, independently uh, submit apps, uh, submit your apps to the Play Store. Let's uh, go forward with the um, iOS App Store. Uh, setup. So uh, iOS app store setup is uh, pretty much simpler. Uh, you just need to go to the app store connect API. Basically, uh, we need to generate the app store connect API. So go to the app store connect uh, under users and access gen uh, and under the keys um, tab. So generate a key, whatever the keys is generated, give the uh, access has app manager. Uh, you can note down the issuer ID, key ID, which is uh, useful uh, while uh, completing the form in the export dashboard. So yeah, I think uh, 
this is how uh, we will let expo submit our ios and android apps to the respective stores so yeah expo dashboard is capable of uh, everything right from uh, the build triggers and um, to setting up of the play store app store and even credential management everything is awesome so then why do we even need eas.json you might be wondering right so what is the use case so there uh, might be few use cases uh, which i have mentioned like uh, some um, Uh, probably version control like um, you want a separate um, workflow to be handled in um, a branch uh, called main for which is for production and another branch is for um, deploy uh, development so uh, cases like that might arise or uh, the Uh, different uh, profiles have can have different configurations. So, uh, development profile can have different configurations. So, it varies on build profile as well. So, there might be advanced uh, build configurations like um, auto increment can be set up or uh, the Android build type, uh, which type A, A, B, or A, P, K. So, these type of um, configurations can be set up in AS dot JSON. and a uh, custom hooks obviously is so uh, if you want to introduce any um pre build or post build scripts or in the test scripts so you can do that in as.json or if you want to e- uh, use es uh, in some headless ci support like github actions you can um yeah you make use of es.json basically it acts as like a blueprint for the whole uh, building process wherein uh, for uh, the basic use case expo dashboard serves the purpose So this is the um, example format of how AS dot JSON looks like. So we do have multiple profiles uh, here. There is a submit section. Uh, you can mention environment variables. Um, there is a lot to explore here. So coming to the last step of the talk, which is the common CI/CD errors. So this is a reality check for all of us. So no matter how uh, much stable your pipeline is, it might still break because of these um, uh, silly issues like uh, expired or mismatched credentials. So um, all of a sudden, uh, probably after uh, six months or one year, your certificate gets expired and you're not aware. So it might happen. uh duplicate mo- build number so obviously for with successive builds for android uh version code and for uh, ios um build number has to be incremented so uh make sure that the same build number doesn't go otherwise it gets rejected incorrect app id bundle id obviously this uh, needs to be checked uh before building actually uh sometimes the agreement uh, gets um uh, agreement is not accepted so uh, apple releases a new agreement and the owner has to make sure in the apple developer portal that this agreement has to be accepted um dependencies um error uh, mismatch obviously this uh, issue uh, actually even before building this uh, issue occurs so make sure all the packages are uh, in line and uh, there is no conflicts uh, in between the dependencies uh, the sdk and the xcode versions match and no access rights for service account this uh, this is a rare uh, issue but yeah it might occur so make sure that the role is given uh, rightly um the provisioning profile yeah this the last issue i think we have faced a lot uh, so let's say i think if you are using apple sign in um feature so ma- make sure the, f- the capability is also turned on in your certificate as well in the portal uh, not just in your xcode so yeah i think um we have come to the end um, and it was great exploring uh, expo ci cd uh, and uh, making it uh, use in day to day life thank you so much